Still Life, our regular look at the week's best news photographs. This week we asked Andy Blackmore, the picture editor at The Independent, which photos he found the most striking. Here's a selection from the best images of, of the week. And if I take this one first, this also illustrates one of the great pictures from the week, but it also gives you some idea of how the game plan changes as um, new stories break. Um, this is by Tom Pilsen. It's of um, the Macedonian border. I think you can see, you know, it's, it's just a very simple picture, yet it works on many levels. I mean, the strange biblical feel that it has, the boy holding the, um, is, that, is it actually the boy holding his um, sister there? And I mean, and for me, it just works very well. I mean, the writer and the photographer have gone together. This has been worked out and have planned all day. Um, you know, it would have been a very great successful picture to use. Unfortunately, just as we're going off stone on this, um, the major high school story broke. So, first of all, we managed to get in a video grab and we sent this for our first edition. Then, we waited for the images to drop. Okay, and this is, this is the final edition that we end up with, and I think you'll agree, I mean, that's a very good, strong news story. Um, totally different to the feel that we were going for in the beginning. And obviously, the, um, the shooting has sort of completely dominated the front page, and it's you know, completely changed pace with the war. I mean, that's just an illustration, in my opinion, of a couple of, of good pictures. Um, another one of my favourites from the week, again, on the actual shooting, is this one. I think, I mean, you can almost actually feel what that, that lad is feeling there. You know, the strength of that picture. Again, very simple, but, I mean, a classic, decisive moment. I think, you know, it's summed it all up in one image. Obviously, it's just been reinforced on what we'd seen the previous day and what we'd seen on television. But again, I mean, I think that's worked quite, well, quite well. I mean, moving, moving back in the week, we then end up with some of the images from the war. I think this, again, is another great, great use of photography. I mean, this is from, by Paul Lowe from Magnum, who is undoubtedly one of the great photographers um, around at the moment. Um, he's actually, it's not a gimmick, but he's actually used a very different camera on this. He's used a Leica that is actually twice as wide as a normal 35mm frame. Um, very easy to misuse something like that, but I think you can see here that he's managed to capture such a range of emotion in this image. And every face there is telling a different story. You know, it, we have the Western woman. We can all identify with her. We have the, um, the clearly sort of quite European woman there. We, we, and again, we can, we can see the whole range of song in that picture. Again, I think, I think it's simply from tremendous. If we go, go on further through these, I, mean, I just picked this up. This is a use, again, the, the lads involved in the American shooting. Um, this is an illustration of something that, really, we only actually had two images to choose from. The large picture of this chap, the small picture of this chap. And that, I mean, that was all we, we had to use. And I think we actually made quite a powerful, powerful show of it there. If we move inside on this edition, this, again, from the American um, story, I think is, again, simply excellent. Um, it's an unusual picture, in a sense, because it's a triage centre. Everybody here is actually so focused on their own work. I mean, in, in the work of saving lives and moving along, they, they all seem to be working in isolation. It seems to give the image that spooky feel. This, this sweep here tends to also tend to focus in to what isn't really a very, very small amount of blood. I mean, but that's all we, all we really need. I mean, I think our imagination fills in our blanks with the rest of the terror of the situation. Again, again from this particular edition, I think this is another um, excellent photo. I think what works here is the strange juxtaposition of the, the actual burning building, which is actually Slobodon's um, party HQ, and the um, the vivid use of the poster there. Um, basically, it, it just it sums it up. You know, just imagine. I mean, just imagine. You know, if we were bombing in um, Paris. Um, again, you know, this is a case where a picture is sort of saying you know, a thousand words. I think it, it works very, very well. Bizarrely, for um, what you might think a picture editor, I think this is also. An illustration of a very, very good use of pictures, in as much as there's no picture there, because quite simply, 
there wasn't a picture that could um, match Robert Fisk, sorry, Robert Fisk's very, very vivid account of what had actually happened on the, on the um, convoy. So, again, I mean, I you might think that's a little bit bizarre, but it illustrates what, again, what could have looked like a gimmick, yet was, in fact, very, very powerful. This, I think, is a very, uh, very uh, nice image. This is by David Ashton, a staff photographer. Completely off the main pace of the week. There's nothing, nothing gloomy or depressing about it. It's quite simply a, a good use of composition and colour. These are the medals and weight collection from the runners of the London Marathon. Quite striking, very, um, very simple, and, and work quite nicely. And, you know, it's, it's not depressing. Aboard now, and six South African police officers were suspended after BBC film.